G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring, and this episode we're in Litchfield National Park. Should be a good one. Unfortunately, unbeknown to us, we were sharing that pool with a two and a half metre saltwater crocodile. We are staying at Litchfield Safari Park. So we're going to base ourselves there for three nights. Quite a nice central spot. So um, we'll just day trip to the different um, attractions. Yeah, you could do this out of Darwin. It's only an hour out of Darwin. But um, just to minimise the amount of driving we're doing and maximise the amount of exploring we can do, we're gonna base ourselves in the park. Plus the campsite we're staying at looks quite nice. Yeah, I was actually gonna book some of the um, NT parks um, places, but they're all booked out. Yeah, plus it's we've done a lot of free camping and stuff and it's getting warmer now. We're, we're getting into the mid thirties. We've come straight out of winter in Perth. So we're quite happy to be on, on air on con. Power. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. It's only $55 a night for power, which is pretty good. Um, really in the scheme of things. Yeah. Um, they do also do unpowered there for, I think it's $20 a night and that's actually cheaper than the parks campgrounds. Yeah, right. Yeah. So this is like a little, it's a privately owned um, caravan think, park. Yeah, I think I it's mean, sort I, of like a caravan park. I suppose yeah. all caravan parks are privately owned, but yeah, it's like someone's property, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not really sure. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll suss it out. Yeah. Anyway, Litchfield should be good, eh? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Staying here for three nights? Yeah. Gives us two full days. Is that enough to do most of the stuff we want to do? I don't know. That's all we got. Camping chair. Oh, yeah, Check this out. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. So nice to have a recliner. It's actually really uncomfortable. I don't Whoa. like it. Oh, I love it. Tiff loves I it. Love it. Chloe too. loves it. We have to get another one for Chloe. You want one as well, don't you, Chloe? It's so a spin effects anaconda. Mm. I'm playing back. Good. We did a overnight stay between Kakadu and Litchfield just one night in the caravan park to take Brody to hospital for more x-rays and um, a little bit more of a look into his sore wrists. So, yeah, still don't really know what it is. They are a little bit concerned about it. We're booking in for an MRI because they think there might be an infection or something in the joint. So, we'll wait and see what happens. Might just chill out today. We, we, we didn't get back into about 11 o'clock last night, so the kids were knackered. And then we've had to do a move today. Might just chill here, check it all out tomorrow. Florence Falls, couldn't even get a car park. <laughs> Coaches and people triple parked. It's it gonna... says, I was reading the brochure at the reception where we're staying and it said come before, was it 10 to yeah. meet the crowds? Well, we're... it's 11. <laughs> I think the hottest part of the day is a lot of people camping that aren't on power, that spend all day down here to, to stay cool. Yeah, true. So it looks really busy, but we'll have a quick look. This thing's gonna be trashed by the end of the street, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's having an artist's life. This is pretty. So there's two ways to get to Florence Falls. You can take the hundred and something amount of stairs, or you can go via the Shady Creek paved walk, which is 1K, but it's really not that paved. Um, it's a lot of stairs still. So this is our current situation. This is ridiculous. This is not an easy stroll. Oh, it is without a brand. Thank you. 
Oh, we're just gonna check out Bully um, Rock Hole on the way home. I couldn't get a car park. The, the walk from where I've had to park to the car park is longer than the walk to the water hole. It is really busy in Litchfield at the moment, but it's our fault. It's school holidays and it's also peak season. I think if you even want to just get a car park in these places, you've got to be here really early. Anyway, we'll have a look at this one. Rockpool, what do you reckon, Chloe? Good. Good. It's nice down here, bloody busy though. What do you reckon, yeah, Mama? Busy. Probably a bit better to find like a spot of your own though, like it's a bit easier. Yeah, I think you can keep walking along there and find your own spot so you don't have to be down in this main pool. Pretty. Oh no! We were going to do this full drive track, Chloe. Reynolds River. Everything's closed. Bugger. Well, this is a 50k full drive track that we were hoping with the van ditched. Is it 50k? Is it? Yeah, 45 or something like that. 50k to Daly River Road? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, 50 odd k, something like that. Full drive track from, from here to Daly River Road with a heap of um, points of interest along the way, including a couple of swimming spots and waterfalls. Can camp out here as well, somewhere as well, I think, can you? I'm sure. Yeah, I don't know about not that. The, obviously not with the van. No, no, you can't take the van. Um, but yeah, we were really hoping to do that, but it looks as though with the late rain, they still haven't opened it yet. In fact, Wangi Falls that we're going to tomorrow has only just, just opened recently. I think so. Yeah. So um, they do shut these when there's... Yeah, we were just speaking to a guy from, was it AA, AAA Tours? AT Tours? Yeah, the um, coach bus guys. And didn't he say that one of the crossings here has Can 900 mil of water in it at the moment? Yeah, nearly a metre deep. So he said they just they just keep these tracks closed because otherwise people go bombing in there and destroy their cars. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll, only get, we'll just hit the things we can do. But so far what we're finding in Litchfield is um, it's super oh. busy, but that's because we're in peak season, school holidays, and because they shuttle, they shuttle these things off season. So there's only a pretty yeah, limited yeah, window. They do. A lot of them anyway. Yeah. Um, and so it's so accessible. It's, that's it's, one thing we like. Yeah, it's like 45 minutes from Darwin. Yeah. So you can do it as a day trip. And they're, they're all very easy to get to, like walking-wise. Very so kid-friendly. Anyone's capable of getting to them. Yeah. Even um, with the pram, we've managed to um, full drive the pram into most of these spots okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's still nice, though. It's still worth visiting because you, you can find a little pocket to yourself. Yeah. To enjoy. If you go a little bit further, yeah, you can sort of wade through or yeah. walk along the edges and you can get a little pool to yourself. Yeah. It's nice. So Righto. That's probably it for today. We'll yeah. We'll go home, have some lunch, and then tomorrow morning we'll do Wangi. Wangi and a Wang, couple other and little or ones. Cascades. Or Cascades. They're right near where we're staying, so. We're going to try hit one of them early so that we can um, get a car park. <laughs> yeah. And I maybe. Don't know, I don't know if we want to do the Lost City as well. Yeah, but maybe we'll do that later in the day because I don't care if that's busy. I want to water hold yeah. myself. Yeah. Um, and we'll do a cook up tomorrow. Let's get those um, shanks out. We bought more lamb shanks. We're enjoying our lamb at the moment. Mm. We'll do a lamb curry. We'll do that tomorrow. The rest of the day is just going to be chilling. Oh, we've changed our minds. Uh, Brody's had a good sleep and it's still quite warm in the Arvo. So kids are keen to go for a swim. Dad's keen to go for a swim. We're really close to Wangi Falls. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> So we're gonna go check out Wangi Forms. Keen kids? Yeah. Brody, you keen? A five. Nice. Let's go. Where's mum? We're waiting on mum. Then we're going. Oh, there you go, that's what they do. Surveys. Surveys. Traps. Removed <laughs> when detected. 
Mm. Wait, we, haven't, we haven't mentioned it yet, have we? Yeah. That Bitter Springs. Oh no, go on. Yeah. Um, was it yesterday or the day before, the Northern Territory uh, Wildlife and Parks people put up a thing on Facebook to say that they'd found a croc at Bitter Springs, which is at Mataranka. A saltwater croc. Yeah. Yeah. So they've shut it and they're going to remove the croc. But yeah, crazy because we were only swimming there like last week. Mm. Very frightening. Yeah. It is a bit, it's a bit creepy, but we're nearly there. Come on. If we done like what? Why can I only see blue in the sky? And I think it might be, and I think it's quite deep too, isn't it? That's why it's so dark. Nice, eh? Yes, it's beautiful. Mum has got Brody in the water over there. Should we go back in? What do you mean? Back in. Yeah! Come on. <laughs> They've got all the gates ready to close this pool off and there's a croc in here. Must happen fairly regularly. See what the gates are for? Yeah, that's, they block it off in the wet. Yeah, so they can close the pool off and there's crocs. Yeah. Just gonna have a quick look at this viewing platform before we go. Daddy, I say you need to do a punch. That we might do the pose like where a lady stands in she front wants of the oh, Come on. Yeah, go yeah, on. Wangi Falls, bloody beautiful. I want to come back tomorrow with Chloe because at the base of that smaller fall was a little um little spa pool. There were people in it the whole time. Chloe and I are going to come back and we're going to have a look in that spa pool, aren't we? Yeah, but yeah. I think it'll be amazing if we go tonight. Well, tonight? Nah, it's too dark now though, too late. Aren't the colours beautiful though, Tiff? Yeah. Changes colour as the sun's setting. Yeah. All right, let's go. Bit of coffee on the go this morning. To tell you the truth, we're a little bit bummed out, aren't we, Tiffy? Because we, we, um, we, we normally drink a lot of cold brew and I didn't bring the cold brew gear on this trip. Absolutely could have and should have. We are drinking the same beans though. Espresso Tenango, uh, he's a roaster in um, New South Wales. Uh, we, doesn't matter where you are in Australia, he does like coffee subscriptions or you can just buy a bag at a time. Uh, he, actually, what we did on our last big trip was we actually got coffee beans forwarded to wherever we were gonna be. So just care of Cam Wild at Caratha Post Office or whatever, and he just forward them there and we pick them up. So really good to have nice fresh beans, uh, grinding them manually, uh, which I often do. Mocha pot makes just a really good consistent coffee. So that's a Bialetti mocha pot, uh, and that's also a Bialetti uh, milk frother that we use. All of that gear is also from um, Espresso Tenango. Um, yeah, Jason does some really good stuff. Let's go check out some more water holes. So just staring down, we're gonna have a look at this full drive track out to Lost City, which is an interesting rock formation. Wear down, stick it in full drive, we'll have a look. It's probably not too bad, it's only five Ks. Hey, we're gonna go out to Cascades, um, but we were just checking online and the lower pool, which is the easier bit to get to, was only two Ks or something. Uh, that's closed for swimming, and the upper pools, it's like three and a half Ks or something. Probably just a bit far for us. It's over 30 degrees already, and um, we probably left it a little bit late so in the day, so we'll give that one a miss. We're kind of a little bit walked out, um, gorged out at the moment. With the kids, we're just looking for shorter walks and we just want to sort of cruise between rock holes we can swim in, waterfalls we can swim under. We've been a bit spoiled for choice. So uh, I think we'll leave those two for another time. Um, we'll do this full drive track out to Lost City and then there's a, a, a lookout um, over some waterfalls on the way back. And I reckon that might be the morning. The Savo, we'll probably go back to that Wangi Falls and go for another swim because that was just beautiful. And we'll do a good, uh, a good cook up tonight as well. Anyway, sounds like these deflators are just about done. Let's check out this track, check out Lost City.
track, but it's it's not really a full wheel drive track, is it? <laughs> no. No. It's not the driveway. <laughs> I didn't need to let it tyres down, uh, and I didn't need to lock it in full drive. It'd be a different story in the wet, but it'd be shut in the wet anyway. Yeah. yeah. You never know, though. Like, the signs tell you full wheel drive only. Yeah. I don't know. It is narrow, so people are pulling over for each other, which is good. It's a little bit tight for two two way I guess isn't it Tiff? Yes it's my kind of four drive track. Yeah not a four drive track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and bogged already. Yeah, I think we're going to go look at Tolma Falls. It's just a, a short there. little lookout. You can't swim there? No, you can't, can't swim there. Yeah. Oh, actually, the other one's um, wheelchair friendly as well, the whole 800 metre. Yeah. Yeah, we might as well do that. Oh, wow. That's cool. That is cool. Tiff reckons she enjoyed the shanks I did the other week so much that I've got to do them again. Is there mm -hmm. some truth in that? Yeah, but now you're changing the recipe. Yeah. So the last one was like a tomato-y, base -y sort of... What do you call that? I don't know. Just... That's the traditional sort of way of doing shanks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're going to do it again. We bought some more shanks, but this time I want to do like a... Um, I want to do a... Well, I want to do a Massaman curry because I really like them, but I couldn't find the tin. This is the brand of um, curry paste I like to use. I've got to tie a red curry instead, which is good though, because we've got a couple of sweet potatoes that need eating. So I've cubed up sweet potatoes. I'm browning off the shanks on the Ziggy right now outside. And then all I'm going to do is dump a couple of tins of coconut milk, uh, one coconut cream, the red curry paste. Shanks are going to go, once they're all brown, they're going to go inside that mixture. I'm going to wrap it all up with foil and it's just going to simmer away at like 160, 180 degrees for about three hours. In the last hour and a half or so, I'm going to add the um, chunks of sweet potato, wrap it all back up. Last half hour, I'm going to um, take all the coverings off, take the foil off, turn the barbecue up as high as it'll go and sort of brown the top. And then we'll have that with some rice. Sounds like a plan. This is a super simple curry. Like that's as simple as it gets. Um, I normally do use those tins, but I add a couple of other things um, just to freshen it up a little bit, like fresh ginger, uh, fresh garlic, fresh lime juice, uh, kaffa lime leaves fish sauce, sugar, um, stock, a few other things. But we're just gonna go super basic because I couldn't get any of those things. Still should be good. Takes a few hours, but hopefully it's worth it. Yeah? What do you got? Daddy's camera, yeah? Oh dear. Right, it smells good. And dish up. Just mine? Yeah. Any good? It's a bit spicy. Yeah, it did come out quite a bit hotter than expected. <laughs> I um, like that. I'm a wolf, so I don't like spice. No, you don't. Um, sorry to say, but round one was better. Oh, really? <laughs> I think I'll enjoy this more. I love a good curry. Mm -hmm. Yum. 
I had to come back on to say that she is absolutely wrong. This is so good. It is an awesome curry. Tiff doesn't like hot food. If you like hot food, 100% give this a crack. It is so good. It's not that hot, but I find any sort of spice detracts from the flavor for me. Like I, all I can taste is spice. She's wrong, spice is flavor. <laughs> this is so good. Give it a crack if you like hot food. Well, that was Litchfield. We really enjoyed our time here. Um, it's been really good to be on a powered site with the aircon on every day because it's been over 30 degrees and quite humid. And it's been really nice to sort of go from there to these beautiful water holes and go swim in, do some short walks. Everything's really accessible. It's been really good. We've also really enjoyed the accommodation we stayed in. Come on, Chloe, let's go and we'll go for a swim. Chloe's just found a kangaroo. Anyway, Chloe and I have just come back down to Wangi Falls real early just after sunrise because there's a wicked little rock pool in the waterfall, like a little infinity pool or a spa pool, isn't there? Yeah, and it's and there was a lot of people yesterday in it, like four or five. Yeah, it was it was busy yesterday and we waited for ages to try to get into it because you'd only fit a couple of people in it and we yeah. couldn't get a turn, so we've come back really early. It's gonna be bloody freezing. No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Alright, let's go. I think we're gonna get it. I think we're the only ones here, so we're gonna get this spot. Woohoo! It's worth getting up early for this stuff. Alright, let's go, girl. Yeah. Hopefully, there's no big crocs. Wangi Falls, absolutely beautiful spot. Unfortunately, unbeknown to us, we were sharing that pool with a two and a half meter saltwater crocodile. We didn't know at the time. Uh, it wasn't until the next day we started getting messages from family members and, and uh, friends that knew we'd been there or were there uh, asking if we were okay. And that's because early news articles were coming out saying a man had been attacked by a crocodile and rushed to hospital. What really happened was the next day after we were swimming there, a man was attacked by a two and a half meter saltwater croc. Uh, not life-threatening injuries. He had some lacerations to his hand. We was rushed to hospital and the pool was shut down. Croc was uh, captured by rangers. But that means that's the second time in a week that we've been sharing a water hole with a saltwater croc in the territory. So apparently it does happen fairly, fairly regularly, or it does happen anyway. I still think the risk is fairly low. Um, there hasn't been a lot of fatal attacks. I think you're probably more likely to have an accident on the way to the pool than you are to be uh, attacked by a crocodile. So it wouldn't put me off swimming uh, in water holes in the territory. I think if you ask Tiff, she might give you a different answer. It's, it's rattled her a fair bit. Um, but yeah, we, f we feel really sorry for the bloke that was attacked and, we're, and uh, we feel really lucky that we weren't attacked because yeah, the likelihood is that 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 croc was in that water hole um, when Chloe and I were swimming across there. It's quite a scary thought. The Daily Mail actually ran a, a news article on us and, and, and took some photos off our social media. Um, it was a bit of a beat up, to be honest. We had a bit of a laugh about it. Um, but yeah, we printed that off and Chloe took it into school for show and tell. So yeah, all in all, um, Wangy Falls, beautiful. Definitely go back there. I'd swim there again. Um, I think the rangers do a really good job of surveying, trapping, um, and keeping an eye on crocs to keep swimmers safe. And Litchfield, absolutely cracking spot. We probably did um, sort of half the things that, that are available to do there, all the stuff that was easier to do with, with the kids and in the sort of time frame that we had. We've left a few things to go back to do, which is really exciting. So when the kids are a little bit older, we'll go back, we'll do some longer hikes do that full drive track, um, the Reynolds River full drive track that we wanted to do, and a few other things. But yeah, that was our time in Litchfield. Loved it. Um, definitely recommend you get out there. Next week's episode will be in Darwin, so um, I'll see you next week. Cheers, guys. Mm -hmm.